So Rezap, as Scott said, Rezap is a digital healthcare company. Uh, we've been focused over the last five years now since listing the company on building the clinical data, getting our regulatory approvals for what is a very novel diagnostic test for respiratory disease. Uh, and right now we stand on the edge of commercialization. Um, and I'm very pleased to say that we're just late last year, we announced our first real commercial deal with Coview, an Australian telehealth company, uh, where we're inter integrating our respiratory diagnostic test into their telehealth platform. Uh, and so we sort of see Coview as the model of our commercialization activities in particular into telehealth. So just about us, we've been developing the world's first clinically validated and regulatory approved smartphone diagnostic test for respiratory disease. Uh, as I said, it's been very much focused on the clinical validation and the regulatory pathways over the last five years. Uh, the unique thing about our technology is that we only require a smartphone. Uh, and so we think this is a huge value proposition, especially in telehealth, but also in emergency department use and just general use. We are a piece of software, an app that sits on a phone that listens to your cough and is able to accurately diagnose disease from that cough. Uh, essentially, researchers at the University of Queensland found that cough sounds contain information about what's going on inside your lungs. Um, so whether or not your airways were being constricted for asthma or whether they had fluid buildup for something like pneumonia, that indication was shown through in your cough sound and we could analyze that cough sound to make an accurate diagnosis. Uh, cough is one of the most common reasons for someone to visit the doctor. So we're estimating that are nearly a billion doctor visits every year, resulting in a diagnosis of respiratory disease. Uh, we have regulatory approvals, as I said now, both in Europe and Australia, we have an FDA approval in train, um, which we think is a, a very good chance of, of getting approved uh, within the next six months. Um, we're moving on to the commercialization. I'll sort of talk more about that during this, this presentation. Uh, just briefly about the company itself, um, you know, as I said, we've been uh, on the ASX now for five years. We have a market cap of about 170 million. Uh, we have 4 million in the bank. And I think importantly, we have a board of directors that have both healthcare and technology experience. Uh, and we're really at that intersection of healthcare and technology. So it's important we have a good strategic board uh, to drive us forward. So cough is the most common reason for you to visit a doctor. Uh, it's the most common outcome of a doctor's visit is a diagnosis of respiratory disease, whether that respiratory disease is something more serious like pneumonia uh, or asthma, or whether it's just an upper respiratory tract infection like a pharyngitis. Um, all of these conditions are very different or are treated very differently, and it must be a, a and it's a differential diagnosis to make this. Uh, today, that diagnosis is made through a stethoscope, through chest x-ray, through blood tests, basically a whole suite of tests um, to come up with that actual clinical diagnosis. Uh, what we found is that, that that clinical diagnosis today is time consuming, it's expensive, um, and it's actually not that accurate. We ran a large study in the US, 1,500 patients. We had three clinicians look at every single patient, and we found that two clinicians disagreed with each other roughly 30% of the time. Um, so this is two clinicians with all of this data still disagreed with each other around a respiratory disease diagnosis. Uh, the technology itself uh, was developed at the University of Queensland. It uses cough sounds, as I said earlier, um, and effectively we used a built-in microphone in most modern smartphones. Um, so we don't need any accessories. We don't need any cloud. We're able to do all the processing on the phone itself. And really, you hold the phone about an arm's length away from the patient or an arm's length away from yourself. Uh, you provide five coughs. You answer a few questions about your, how old you are, or whether you're male or female. A little bit about the history of your illness. How long have you had a fever for? And then we provide an instantaneous diagnosis then and there on the phone. Uh, the technology itself is underpinned by a core patent, which is granted in the US and other countries. Uh, we have a number of other patent families coming through at various stages of examination. Uh, and importantly, we have a proprietary data set that we use to train our algorithms. We have over 6,000 patients' coughs, and importantly, their clinical diagnosis. Uh, it's really important that we get a good gold standard clinical diagnosis to compare their coughs to, to teach our algorithms how to effectively differentiate those coughs. So I won't cover this in too much detail today, but we've run a number of clinical studies, these are prospective, double blind, gold standard clinical studies run at major hospitals here in Australia and the US. US hospitals included Mass General Hospital in Boston, Cleveland Clinic, so very well regarded hospitals. 
um, multiple studies, great results across the board, 80 plus percent accuracy in Australia for both kids and adults, a little bit lower in the US. We actually saw more disagreement between clinicians in the US, uh, which is one of the reasons we see the drop. Uh, and we also have published and presented these results in major medical journals and in major medical conferences. Again, as we build up the evidence and as we build up the knowledge of the clinicians globally on what we can do, which is really important for the clinic for the commercialization. So on that commercialization front, we've really started targeting five areas for commercialization. So obviously regulatory approval is a must have uh, for commercialization of a medical device. We have those approvals now in Europe and Australia. A US approval over the next six months. Uh, we have engaged with key opinion leaders and I think importantly we've set up an industry advisory board in the US with two very well regarded, highly respected uh, members of the US healthcare community, especially in digital health, uh, one of which runs Partners Healthcare's Digital Health Partners is the largest healthcare provider in the northeast of the US uh, and the other set up Kaiser Permanente's telehealth business. So very experienced people who are able to provide a lot of strategic advice to us. Uh, as I said, pre presentations and publications in key at key conferences and key peer review journals. Uh, and obviously we've been proactive now starting to build up a business development team and a sales and marketing team as we hit that commercialization. So we just set up a, U a UK based subsidiary. We have a hire um, ha to be happening very soon in the UK who will head our European sales and marketing force who has extensive experience in Europe uh, selling point of care diagnostics. So commercialization, how do we go about that? The first angle that we are targeting for commercialization is telehealth. Uh, and so this is why we founded the company five years ago was that we saw a unique opportunity here to provide a diagnostic test to clinicians during telehealth. Telehealth today is a video consultation with your doctor, with your GP, uh, and that GP is trying to make a diagnosis of your particular diseases. Now, typically when you walk into a GP's office today and you've got a cough, they'll listen to your chest with a stethoscope. You obviously can't do that over a video consultation or a video call. Uh, so one option is buy lots of Bluetooth stethoscopes and send them out to all your customers. It's clearly not uh, an economically viable solution. You know, a $100 stethoscope to a million clients is not that economically palatable to most telehealth companies. So we provide really the world's only option here in that we can provide an accurate diagnosis to that telehealth clinician using just the software embedded wow. into the telehealth provider's app. So that's an important factor in our business model here is we're not going out and selling ResApp as an app. We're selling our algorithms to be embedded in those telehealth providers app so that we instantly get access to the millions of consultations that that telehealth provider is doing today. So just to give you some numbers, somewhere between 75 plus million um, telehealth consultations are occurring every year in the US. That's a relatively old number now. Um, you look at somewhere like China where Ping An and Good Doctor are doing over half a million consultations per day. Um, so these are big, big market opportunities. Roughly half of all telehealth consultations are respiratory related. So again, our real key value proposition here is that we can provide those doctors with an accurate diagnosis over some software running in that telehealth session. They don't have a stethoscope today. We replace that stethoscope with an accurate diagnosis. Tom, can you just explain so how it is so they are asking you 20 questions and looking at you and making a call. Uh, and they are today prescribing antibiotics um, over the telehealth consultation based on that. So you can imagine there are a lot of calls as well for overuse of antibiotics. Um, there's also a lot of um, concern from the clinician point of view about making these diagnoses because the liability lies with the clinician in the end. Um, and so when you talk to telehealth companies, actually having a tool like ours on their platform is a marketing exercise for the clinicians. It means more clinicians may want to do telehealth because they can um, make an accurate diagnosis. Uh, so telehealth is you know, what we believe to be our beachhead market, our first market for our product. Uh, but we have had a significant interest from groups such as emergency departments or even in GP clinics where we can triage patients and very quickly put a patient in the right room. So you can imagine when you walk into the emergency department, the nurse triages you, typically they take your blood pressure, ask you your weight, uh, ask you your age. Here you could take a cough sound recording, provide a diagnosis and work out whether that patient just has a common cold and should be sent home, uh, whether they have pneumonia and they should be accelerated through the process of chest x-ray and antibiotics. Uh, across both telehealth and clinical use, our business model or our pricing model remains the same. 
We provide value every time our test is used, so we should be paid every time our test is used. Uh, and so we are looking at charging between $5 and $10 per test every time we get used. That holds up pretty well if you consider a telehealth consultation itself is $50 to $60 per <laughs> consultation. In, a, in an ED, a chest X-ray is $300 in the US. So we've got a significant cost savings and can potentially reduce those X-rays and the costs. More importantly, in the clinical, when we start talking to people in the emergency department or in hospitals, what they're about is time. If they can reduce the time that you're in that emergency department, either to be discharged home or to be um, admitted to the hospital, that's really important KPI for those um, emergency rooms. So, how difficult is it to actually get Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think the um, the clinical use is going to be a slower market entry than telehealth. So, telehealth is clearly one that we see a very fast accelerated entry. Clinical use is a, is going to be a slower burn in. It's a bigger market in the end, but a slower burn in. Uh, our our focus is initially on hospitals which are already deploying smartphones into their emergency departments, which is actually a lot of hospitals. So, you've got companies like IBM who are pushing in smartphones into the hospitals to do things like replace the pages, replace the round systems, and start replacing the paper-based documentation. So our goal in there is to work with those hospitals, potentially even through partners who are already embedding technology into the ED. Um, but we're also developing our own hardware to go into those locations. So um, we've talked to some hospitals who are very much against having a phone in the ED. So that you can imagine a very busy London hospital they think having a phone in their ED, someone's going to steal it and use it for other things. Um, so for those cases, we're arming our sales team essentially with multiple options. So one is on a phone, one is on your existing phone, or another is here's a piece of hardware which we can give to you potentially for free and we still charge you per, per use. So we're looking at strategy is going to be a slower burn than telehealth. Sure. Um, so the question was, do we replace a chest X-ray? Um, and today, no. Today, no. We don't. We're not targeting replacing uh, something like a chest X-ray or a blood test. Uh, our initial target is in triage or in locations such as telehealth, where you know, there are no stethoscope. Um, we are in our clinical studies. We do compare against the complete testing. So you know the diagnosis that we compare our result to uses chest X-ray, blood tests, everything. Um, but our initial commercial focus is not to replace that. Uh, in the ED, our initial commercial focus is to provide the clinician as they walk into the room with the information about what to do next. Uh, and we think that can help shorten that and, and accelerate the time someone goes to the chest X-rails or gets antibiotics. Uh, this slide also is interesting. So this slide is something that we've pretty much shown um, since day one, um, but on the far right hand side of this slide is the direct to consumer market. Um, that's something that internally we had left alone. Um, it was something that we didn't feel like we had the internal skill set to take on. Um, but it's something now that has been accelerated with our work with Sanofi. So Sanofi is a big French pharmaceutical company. Uh, we joined a program with them roughly three months ago uh, where we targeted this exact application. So a direct to consumer approach. Uh, where we are trying to provide people at home, consumers at home, mothers at home, um, information about what to do if they are sick. Uh, so one of the perennial problems in healthcare is if somebody, um, if somebody's at home, they're sick, where do they seek healthcare? Do they go to the chemist? Do they go to the GP? Do they go to the emergency department? Do they go to the um, telehealth setting? Uh, and so Sanofi wanted to work with us to see if we could develop some sort of product to help consumers make a better decision about their healthcare and where to go. Uh, and so we're obviously leveraging a lot of Sanofi's over-the-counter work and their work with direct-to-consumers to help us take our algorithms, which will be used by clinicians, into some sort of form where a consumer could use them directly. Uh, and so that process has been ongoing uh, and you know we're, we're looking forward to continuing that work. It's really exciting. Big opportunity challenges, but a really big opportunity. Uh, so our focus, I guess, right now for commercialization is on the top two bars here. So this is pediatric and adult diagnosis of acute respiratory diseases. So this is in telehealth or in emergency departments. Uh, as I said, right now we have approval in Australia and Europe to go after these indications. 
uh, and we're starting to build our team and build our processes to do that. Uh, Consumer Health with Sanofi, uh, that has a milestone coming up in March where they uh, essentially have a go, no-go gate uh, on their option to take that forward. Uh, and so we, I was in Germany last week and we we're really excited about what the next stages are there. Uh, for COP management, these are things that are coming along in our pipeline, but we do see opportunities there to manage, help people manage their chronic diseases. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about sleep apnea in, in some more slides. Could you just explain uh, the option that Sanofi goes ahead and some Yep. Um, so it, essentially what it looks like to us at the moment is that, you know, if, if Sanofi exercise the option, then we will become a development partner. We will develop the product um, and they will sell and market the product. Um, so, you know, over the last 12 weeks, we've been working with them, designing what is a, a minimal product effectively. Um, then Sanofi have gone and tested it in, in the consumer land to see what it looks like, and then we'll move forward from that. So commercial terms haven't been negotiated yet. Uh, on Sanofi triggering the option, we have a six-month window uh, for those commercial terms to be negotiated out. Uh, but it, at this stage, it looks more likely we'll be developing, and we will then they will then sell it we would obviously get a return on each of those sales. So moving away, you know, this is a little bit of you know, other work that we're doing in chronic disease management. You know, there is a large population of patients with COPD and asthma. These patients need to be managed day in, day out, their disease. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of technologies out there trying to do this. You know, you've got companies like Propeller Health, uh, which is acquired by ResMed, which looks for a connected inhaler, so you know when and where you use your inhaler. Um, there's a bunch of companies in this space. Uh, we think there's there's two benefits that we bring to the table here. Uh, one is that you don't need to carry an extra device. You're already carrying your smartphone in your pocket. Um, the problem that when you talk to doctors who manage these patients is they often give them a peak flow meter, so a little meter where they can measure peak flow. Most of the time it sits in the bottom drawer for the rest of their lives. They never get it out and use it. If we can do something similar on the phone, which you've already got in your pocket, there should be significantly more adoption of the technology and hopefully better health outcomes. Uh, the second thing that we see is the ability to measure severity. So if you can imagine something like Propeller Health or other you know, connected inhaler companies, they tell you when and where you use your medication. They don't tell you if you should use your medication and they don't tell you if that medication works. Uh, and we've got the opportunity to do those two things. So we're quite excited about the opportunity here as well. So just finally, the other area that we've really pushed hard on the development aspect, and it's really exciting because we've actually caught up to the cough work with our sleep apnea work, is being able to screen sleep apnea at home. Um, now, so this is really interesting then that roughly 80% of people who have sleep apnea don't actually know it. Um, so they are suffering from sleep apnea without knowing it, and if you have sleep apnea and it's not treated, you're at a significantly higher risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, stroke. It's not just snoring, it's actually a, a real medical problem. Um, and if you talk to companies like ResMed who have been solving sleep apnea for many, many years, once you get on a CPAP machine, your life changes dramatically. Um, people get better, it really fixes you. The problem there though is that there's a bunch of people who are undiagnosed uh, and so you know, we set out to, can we solve that problem? The reason that people are undiagnosed is probably because of this. It's not a pleasant um, experience being diagnosed with sleep apnea. You've typically got to, in Australia, you've got to go to a sleep lab, spend a night in a sleep lab, requires a referral. Um, you're, you're connected up to 12 cables all over your body, up your nose, on your head. They fall off half the night. It's really hard to sleep. Uh, and then the morning they may give you a diagnosis if all the cables have stayed on and you've had a reasonable sleep. Uh, in the US, they've moved to home sleep testing, still requires an overnight, uh, an overnight sleep study, requires referral, requires training. You've got to work out where to put all the cables on you when you get home. It's expensive and it's still uncomfortable. You've still got to sleep with prongs up your nose. It's not pleasant. Uh, so our solution here is simply a smartphone on the bedside table. So what happens with sleep apnea is you stop breathing during the night. So people with mild sleep apnea probably stop breathing roughly 10 times every hour during night time. If you've got more severe sleep apnea, it can be up to 30 times an hour all night. What we do is we look for that breathing pattern. So we have algorithms that sit on the phone and look for breathing patterns overnight. We also analyze, analyze snore sounds overnight. And from, the, from that analysis, from the breathing pattern and the snore sounds, 
we're able to accurately diagnose sleep apnea, whether it's mild, moderate, severe, at levels similar to what you see with an at-home sleep test. So here what we did was we connected patients to a full sleep test, put them in their home, put a smartphone on the bedside table, press record, and press stop in the morning. And these levels of accuracy are similar to what you see for a home sleep test. So we think there's a huge opportunity here to go directly to consumers to provide people with tools for screening for sleep apnea at home, uh, you know, in, in, in the comfort of your own home in your own bed. So I guess over the next six months, um, there's a lot of really exciting things happening for Reza. Um, the key regulatory decisions are a TGA and FDA decision, both of which are due within the next six months. TGA should be much faster than that. Um, we're working with Sanofi and as I said, that program completes in March. And so we're expecting Sanofi to take that option and to move forward. Uh, we're working with CoView as our first telehealth integration here in Australia, which is a great opportunity for us to really do our first commercial implementation, our first commercial deal in telehealth. We'll mirror that deal in Europe, we'll mirror that deal in the US. Uh, and so it will give us a really good indication of that. Uh, we have our sleep apnea screening product. We've got great results for that back in November last year. Uh, we're now submitting that for CE and we should be ready for, to market that um, later this year. We have prototype wearable and handheld devices. As I said before, one of the options that we want to give our salespeople is the option as a dedicated device. Uh, and we're able to do that shortly. We're working with a German private hospital network. We're actually in discussions with a number of NHS hospitals as well. Uh, and really that commercialization will be bubbling away over these next six months. So we're really expecting to turn a lot of the discussions we've had over really the last four years into commercial deals and announceable deals over the next six months. This is really the, the, the summary side and that's, that's the end. I mean, I think the key for us is that we've really got the clinical data ticked off. We've got some great results, we've published them, um, we've presented them, it's, it's, this works. Uh, there's really no question there that cough sounds do contain information about what's going on inside your respiratory tract. Uh, we understand the regulatory pathway, we've built the skill set to take these products through CE Mark, through TGA uh, and hopefully through FDA. Uh, and so, you know, we've built that capability inside the company and we're really excited about what's next, which is really the commercial side. We think we've got a really strong, really good opportunity to get into telehealth and to get into market early using telehealth because we're not displacing a chest X-ray. We're not displacing an existing technology. We're providing something they don't have access to today, which is really novel and unique in the medical device space. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of other things happening in the pipeline, leveraging our development activities, leveraging our clinical activities, leveraging our regulatory activities. So, you know, we're really excited about the next six months and the next future for Reza. So, thank you.